Hello, this is Dr. Grande. Today's question asks if I can analyze the claims made by Dr. Stella Emanuel, who is part of the America Frontline Doctors Group. Just a reminder, I'm not diagnosing anybody in this video, only speculating about what could be happening in a situation like this. If you enjoy this video, please like it, subscribe to my channel, and consider supporting me on Patreon. I'll put the link to Patreon in the description for this video. On July 27, 2020, a group of about a dozen people wearing lab coats and going by the name America Frontline Doctors stood outside of the Supreme Court and gave what they referred to as a press conference. One of those physicians is named Stella Emanuel. So let's look at a quick background of Dr. Emanuel here. She was born in 1965. She graduated from the University of Calabar in Nigeria, and she did her residency in a Bronx, New York hospital. She practices in a strip mall in Houston, Texas. In addition to being a physician, she is a preacher, and she runs an organization called Firepower Ministries. Now, the video of this press conference was viewed millions of times before it was taken down by social media organizations. It was taken down because it contained a lot of false information. So let's take a look at Dr. Emanuel's position as it was illustrated in this video. She promoted hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19. Now, hydroxychloroquine is a drug used to treat malaria. Many know it as Plaquenil. She also mentioned zinc and Zithromax. Zithromax is an antibiotic. She claims to have used hydroxychloroquine to treat 350 people who had COVID and none of those people died. Now, hydroxychloroquine is considered a disease-modifying anti-rheumatic drug. It was initially used to prevent and treat malaria, as I mentioned. These days, it's most often used to treat rheumatoid arthritis and some of the symptoms of lupus. The FDA had granted emergency authorization to use this drug to treat COVID-19, but in June 2020, they revoked that authorization. The reason they did this was because studies have demonstrated the drug is not effective in treating COVID-19, and it can lead to potentially dangerous side effects in some people. So we can see that Stella Emanuel is making unscientific claims, which evidently is part of a pattern of behavior. Let's take a look at some of her earlier claims. Here are some examples of beliefs that she has made public in the past. She said that cysts, endometriosis, and other gynecological conditions were caused by sex in dreams with demons and witches. She's got this kind of complicated description. These demons pose as spirit wives in people's dreams, then they become spirit husbands, there's a lot of sex going on. It's really a disorganized narrative. I'm not sure what the remedy is supposed to be for this problem that she's putting forward here. I guess people shouldn't dream, or if they do dream, they should limit their sexual activity to non-demons and non-witches only. It's interesting, she doesn't mention the consequences of sex with demons in real life. One would think that would be much worse than in someone's dream. Another thing she said on this subject was that this type of sex the type in dreams with demons, also leads to financial problems, as if somebody needed another reason to avoid sex with demons. How can somebody avoid this activity? Well, Emmanuel comes up with a detection method. She said that people can tell if they have taken a demonic spirit, husband, or a spirit wife. If they have a sex dream about someone they know or a celebrity, wake up aroused, stop getting along with their real-world spouse, lose money, or generally experience any hardship. Some of those are pretty common occurrences, so this would cover a lot of people. What I find interesting here is the loophole. She says a sex dream with somebody they know or a celebrity. So if they're dreaming about somebody they don't know, it sounds like they're okay. So I guess before any activity would take place, somebody who's dreaming should ask a few questions. Do I know you? You ever been in a movie? Do you get stopped in the street by people asking for autographs? Interestingly, her position comes from a myth that goes back to the Epic of Gilgamesh, a Sumerian poem that is over 4,000 years old. So this physician is really up on the latest research. So I guess the public service announcement in this case would be, just say no to demon sex. Emmanuel also believes that scientists are installing microchips in people 
and promoting a vaccine that prevents religious beliefs. She explains how some rulers are not human, rather they are reptilian. She describes them as half-human and half-ET, a reference to the movie about an extraterrestrial. So she's saying alien lizard humanoids are in leadership positions. Now, these same lizard people have DNA that was used in pharmaceuticals, according to Emmanuel, which makes me wonder, what if the alien lizard people are just trying to be helpful? I mean, they're donating DNA to make drugs. Emmanuel claimed hydroxychloroquine could help people. Is this one of those alien lizard humanoid DNA free drugs? Is there a label on the bottle that says that? I think people would want to know that. Now, as if alien lizard humanoids weren't bad enough, Emmanuel says that big tech is censoring experts and suppressing the cure. She also says that she's receiving threats. Now, she dared CNN and Dr. Fauci to take a urine test because she believes they are really taking hydroxychloroquine. It was not just any dare, though. It was a double dog dare. So yet again, we see another physician's career destroyed by the movie A Christmas Story. Now, my favorite claim that she's made has to be the alien lizard people, but there's something else that she said that I thought was fairly telling. She said that when somebody's dead, they are dead. They won't be coming back to life and asking for a double blind study. I guess she's suggesting that good research takes too long, so we should act impulsively and irrationally instead of conducting proper studies to find out the truth. Now, she does have a point here about the dead part. How many movies have we seen where people come back as ghosts and haunt people by asking them for higher quality research studies? When she was in medical school, I guess the lecture featuring this information really struck a chord with her. So it's like she said, wait, you're saying when somebody's dead, they're not alive anymore? I'm glad I didn't skip this class. So in stepping back from all of this, what's going on in a situation like this? Some have suggested that these beliefs are delusional. It could also be an act. She could just be playing a part. There's really no way to know. But no matter what is causing someone to say things like we see Emmanuel saying, her narrative is destructive. It feeds a number of dangerous conspiracy theories, which have really been on the rise with COVID-19. I think many people are afraid of coronavirus, which I understand, but the fear is clouding people's judgment. They see somebody like Stella Emanuel promoting a message that they want to believe in, and they're willing to ignore a tremendous amount of evidence that not only is she making false claims, but she has a history of unusual beliefs. I guess this really supports the idea that if somebody wants a product, they will buy it from any salesperson. I'm actually not sure what's more frightening, coronavirus or the sheer number of people who believe that alien lizard humanoid leaders donated DNA to medications only to suppress information about those medications while encouraging their friends, demons and witches, to reproduce by invading people's dreams and posing as a non-celebrity who is unknown to the person dreaming. So those are my thoughts on the America Frontline Doctors press conference or whatever one would call that, and the claims of Stella Emanuel. Please put any opinions in the comment section. They always generate an interesting dialogue. As always, I hope you found my analysis of this topic to be interesting. Thanks for watching.